Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order to begin with a salute to the flag and a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Harry? Mr. Barton? Here. Ms. Souter? Here. Mr. Conti? Here. Ms. Cusinelli? Here. Mr. Panucci? Here. Ms. Cantillo? Here. Mr. Edwards? The New Jersey Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Bricktown Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be posted on the Administration Office Bulletin Board, the official district website, and channel, and channel BTV20, and sent to the Asbury Park Press, the Brick Times, the Star Ledger, and Municipal Clerk's Office. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. I'd like a motion and a second to enter closed session. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Second. Panucci. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Whereas the Brick Township Board of Education has been formed pursuant to the applicable New Jersey statutes and whereas the board is charged with the responsibility of performing all acts and doing all things consistent with laws and rules of the State Board of Education, necessary for the lawful and proper conduct, equipment, and maintenance of the public schools and public school property of the Brick Township School District, and whereas Section 7 of the Old Public Meeting Act permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the board in certain circumstances, and whereas the board has determined that circumstances exist for such an executive session, and whereas the board has found the action described below to be necessary and proper, now therefore it be resolved by the board on April 30th, 2015, that the board shall be, that the public shall be excluded from the discussion of an action on the executive session here and set forth, that the session matter will be approximately 30 minutes, and the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is five student matters with regard to harassment, intimidation, and bullying. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter will be made public if and when it is deemed to be in the public interest to do so, and the need for confidentiality is no longer required by the board. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Mrs. Carey? Mr. Barton? Yes. Ms. Souter? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. Can I ask everybody to please pull their microphones in? I've been told that the audience cannot hear board members, so please pull them closer to you so everyone can hear you. Thank you. I'd like a motion to come back into open session. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Panucci. Second. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Mr. Barton? Yes. Ms. Souter? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Cancilla? Yes. Some will and some won't. Right now, I'm going to call up Sean from Brick Memorial. Elementary school will be no SGO for them. Even though the state knows that we have to have that done by May 15th. They made it. They came up with the rules. I can print out and send you the MGHE with all the dates. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, we'll make a decision with tenure based on the mail. That's what I don't understand. We are not for that. But, uh, we want to first say that it's 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 everything it's new. Second, second to uh, the last meeting, so that's pretty upsetting. But I think the principal is into the classroom. Um, they are done for the all three years. So, uh, at Memorial, it's it's only three non tenured people? No, no. They get a non tenured people. They're done. You can see uh, those. We're actually having put them wide. Hopefully, you guys have a lot of your old childhood books uh, that you don't need. So, all the donations are done. Uh, it's just a matter of putting them in. Maybe also, if you come donate it to us. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Cat and a half, though, I'm sure we have a lot of those. Uh, so, if you have any of those, please, it's awesome to come donate them for us. Uh, we have a prom and fall coming up for the seniors and juniors. Uh, it is May 15th the prom at the Grand Marquis in Alder, and Ball is at Juliet at Freehold Garden Man. Uh, students are getting really excited for that. The only sad part is the EP test is next week, which is like a very, very prom. Uh, we're all really preparing for that a lot. Uh, I'm in
teaching my class a decent one of them. We're getting ready to take the test. Uh, the teachers are preparing us vigorously. We're doing a lot of work. So they're doing a great job with that. Mm -hmm. And then actually we have the park again, the, the end of the year park, which is May 18th. And the teachers are preparing a lot for that. And we have bio testing, which is May 26th and 27th. Um, then we have the color map at the PNC. We have a lot of clubs participating in that. Feel free to come out for that. I think the color map, I'm not even sure, to be honest with you, but it's like, you, you see, it's like a, a run, obviously. They have paint everywhere. I know it's like a big thing on Twitter. You uh, just run through paint by the end. It's so like, it's awesome, colorful, clothing outfit of paint. So that is, uh, oh, actually, I don't even have dates here. So I'll get back to you with that. But that is a thing made. Saturday. Uh, Brick faculty versus Brick faculty basketball game. Mm -hmm. 6.30 at Memorial next week. No, sorry, two weeks from today, Thursday. So if you can come support for that, it's for the sophomore class. We have the board members, Brick versus Brick. It's going to be sweet. Uh, my teacher, Mr. Johnson, super awesome at basketball. We're talking a lot of smack to each other. It's going to be pretty sweet because I heard they're, they're really good, the two teams. So uh, it's actually, um, you know what, it's the the Thursday before prom, so that is at uh, May 14th. If you come out and support the sophomore class, that would be awesome. The uh, town show is May 21st, and we all, uh, and my friend is doing that. It's a really cool guitar player, it's got a band, so if you come out to that, that's May 21st in our auditorium at 6 o'clock. And then starting tomorrow, the Midsummer Night Jersey, it's a uh, spoof ball, it's coming on screen by Shakespeare. Starts tomorrow at 7 in our auditorium. So if you come out and support the drama club, that'd be great. Uh, and now I have sports. The spring sports. Uh, we have girls' lacks, lacrosse, <laughs> currently 9 and 3. They're 7 0 A South, ranked number 9 in short. We have softball, softball currently 8 and 5. Girls' track finished the dual meet season with a 4 and 3 record. Uh, next up, Ocean County Relays. Boys track, presently 3-3 three three with one dual meet left. Baseball, presently 8-9 and nine with one of the Manor's Cup at the Blue Plus Stadium last Saturday. I went, it was really awesome. And uh, that's yeah, it for the sports. It's been actually for this month, it's kind of just one month. So thank you everybody. I look forward to seeing you all in my last week next month. It's going to be awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Thanks, Sean. Is Alana here for Brick High School? She's not. Is anybody else here for a Brick High School? Okay, so you don't want to come up, Mr. Philippone, huh? Okay, all right, not a problem. At this time, I would like to know if um, Mrs. Iannarone and Angie would like to come up and help me with something. He stops to say hi. 
No laughing after the hello or jokes, just a simple hello like anyone else would get. Sometimes it's the littlest things that make the biggest impact. To children or young adults with disabilities, a kind word or an acknowledgement is earth moving, especially when it comes from a typical student. One parent said of this student, as a parent of a child with a disability, you only hope that your child meets someone like Eric in their lifetime. We were very fortunate that Eric is in our lives. Eric's parents should be very proud of the way they raised him to be such a kind, well-rounded young man. It is my sincere pleasure to present Eric Boutot from the Brick Township High School with this Certificate of Achievement as an Exemplary Peer Model Above and Beyond Recognition Award. Eric. and recuperation from open heart surgery. I am sure everyone here joins me in wishing Mr. Colby good health in the future and hoping you get stronger by the day. I was reluctant to get up here tonight to say farewell to my partner, John. I held out hope that after giving some time to feel better, he'd be right back here where he belongs. Unfortunately, after a recent discussion with John, he advised me, in his words, that will not happen. He said he will not be attending board meetings to receive any plaques or certificates. He made it clear he did not want any long-winded speeches either. Well, Mr. Tolte, I'm speaking directly to you because I know you're not here. I know you are the perennial negotiator, and as you and I have done in the past, Compromise, something we always did best. Your plaque will not be presented at a board meeting as per your request, but we will have one for you regardless. Anything else would be unacceptable. Not recognizing the time and effort you dedicated to this Board of Education for all these years would be remiss, and I don't know a more deserving board member. As for the long-winded speech, I give in to that request but with just one message. I am going to be selfish for just a moment. If you're watching, here's what I say from the bottom of my heart. No one, no one will be you up here. There will be forever a vacancy as my partner on this board. Through the years, we've gone through many ups and downs, crazy issues, protests, and everything in, in between. Everything that can be thrown at a board member. No one will ever fill your shoes. I know we started out together, and I always thought we'd finish together. But now, in your words, God has another plan. You will be missed more than you know. I know the board joins me in wishing you all the best, and God bless you. Um, I'm going to change things up a little bit because I know that we're going to have quite a bit of discussion on the budget presentation, so I'm going to hold that for a little bit. Um, I'm going to go on to approval of minutes, uh, March 19, 2015, executive session, March 19, 2015, regular meeting, March 23, 
2015 special meeting, March 30th, 2015 special meeting, and March 30th executive session. I need a motion and a second. Motion. Thank you, Mrs. Cusinelli. Second. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Do I have any questions from board members on these? Seeing none, Mrs. Kerry? Mr. Barton? Yes. Ms. Souter? I abstain on March 23rd and yes to the rest. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Uh, yes to the 23rd, abstain on 19 and 30. Ms. Cantilla? Yes. Moving on to our superintendent's report, Dr. Yuzinski. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'll be brief because I know we need have a lot to cover, but next week is Teacher Appreciation Week and affords me the opportunity to recognize the dedicated staff in our community. Public school teachers are doing a phenomenal job in preparing our students for their future. Every day, in many ways, individual educators go above and beyond to enhance education for our children. They make a difference in the lives of our students and their work is deeply appreciated. So on behalf of the Board of Education and everyone on the administration team, uh, I want to ahead of time uh, wish the best for our teachers that go above and beyond each and every day for helping to improve our brick schools. So congratulations to our teachers on Teacher Appreciation Day. I would also like to mention that the 2015 Ocean County American Legion Safety Contest we were fortunate to have Lake Riviera, Emma Havens, Drum Point, Osborneville, Herbertsville, and Midstream have winners, and that will be on our website, and we will recognize those students at one of our other meetings. I also would like to recognize that I think it's, it's I mean, we have so many things if you look at the superintendent's corner. However, this was very important where the um, Lake R Riviera Middle School has a technology student association and it's a national organization dedicated to promotion of technology literacy for students in middle and high school. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Lake Riviera Middle School's chapter involvement and throughout the year students worked individually and in teams to create science, technology, engineering, and math or STEM based projects in advance of the annual TSA state competition and in the competition is comprised of events that inspire creativity and hone on the problem solving skills needed for students to compete in the 21st century. There are up to 30 events that students may participate in based on their talents and interests. And many of the events are computer based, such as digital photography, STEM, community service, video, uh, uh, communication challenge. Some are more construction based, like the junior solar sprint, solar cars, structural challenge bridge, design and construction. On April 22nd, uh, Lake Riviera members compete competed at the College of New Jersey against other TSA chapter members from throughout the Garden State and the students' diligence and dedication resulted in 12 winners in multiple categories. I want to congratulate the entire Lake Riviera Middle School staff, administration, and students for their efforts and what they do and their accomplishments. That was tremendous. So congratulations to them. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Yuzinski. Um, moving on to curriculum and instruction, Dr. Morgan. Thank you, Ms. Cantillo. The superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items, one through seven. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morgan. Do I have a motion and a second for items one through seven? Make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Panucci. I'll, I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Souter. Do I have any questions from board members on items one through seven? Yes, Mrs. Souter. On number two, um, which staff is going to each of the workshops? Uh, Mrs. Souter, if it, the, the, is it in the uh, admin notes? No. Oh. Yes, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Any other questions, Mrs. Cusinelli? Yes, I just had a question regarding the um, last policy administering medication um, I think I understood this to be the case but I just wanted clarification please when a student is allowed to self administer an EpiPen or, or, or the like um, am I correct that they are also with a doctor's note given permission to self carry that medication uh, Mrs. Cusinelli, yes, that's true. I mean, it would be the parent's authorization and physician confirmation 
for self-administration. So then that would would kick in and the, the student would be allowed. Okay, so that's just automatic. Thank you. I just want to make sure that was clear. Thank you. Any other questions from board members on items one through seven? Seeing none, do I have any questions from the public on items one through seven? Seeing none, Mr. Carey? Martin? Yes. Ms. Suter? Yes. Mr. Conte? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. At this time, I'm going to move on to human resources. Um, Ms. Osborne? Madam President, the superintendent recommends that the board approve the following items numbered 1 through 14. Excuse me? 1, one through 14. Great. Do I have a motion and a second? I'll make a motion. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Second. Thank you, Mrs. Cusinelli. Do I have any comments from board members on these items? Just, um, sorry. Yeah, just, yes. Just to wish uh, Sergeant Tierney a, a good retirement. You know, Mr. Conti and I both had him in high school, and, you know, he's a great man. That's all. Thank you. We all wish him that. Mrs. Suter? Um, on number, on number 13, can somebody explain the procedure that's done in the district when hiring a coach? I didn't hear what you said. Can somebody explain the procedure when hiring a coach? Because I got an email, as everybody else did, um, asking why it wasn't an external. Was that the anonymous email? Yes. Okay. Dr. So I just would like somebody to address okay. that. Uh, generally, the process would be you would post internally first to see if you have a qualified candidate that meets all your requirements. And if you do, you can do the interviews and make the appointment there. If not, then you would go outside. Okay, so if there wasn't a qualified person, they would make an, an external posting. Yes. That's what Ranger That's correct. Okay, all right, thank you. Any other questions from board members? Seeing none, questions from the public? Yes, sir. You can't see on the screen anything that you're going on. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. See Thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. Oh, okay. Any other questions from the public? Any comments? Yes, sir. Um, yes, going into the coach. Uh, Can you just come up here and just sure, sure, sure. sign your name for the record so we have your name and here's the microphone. And here's the microphone. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, the procedure is if you would like to speak, you can come up and sign your name for the record so that we have it for our, our minutes, which are, is a legal document, so we need the correct spelling of your name. And we'd be happy to hear whatever you have to say. Um, real quick, my name is Dave Christopher. Um, I've been around the Big uh, Rich Ratchet Dragon program for, for pretty much all my life. Um, and I just wanted to actually say a few comments uh, for Wentz Downs. No, we don't have to come anymore. Uh, he's been a friend of mine. No, you have to. I've had the pleasure of coaching with him for several years. And uh, I think he was a candidate uh, to lead our youth um, in it's not ways more than just winning football games. But just ways of uh, developing their character and into young men and leaders. And um, Much more. going right for as long as I have, uh, I, I will say from the bottom of my heart that Can't you plug in uh, he is to he is a one? candidate that uh, tried to do the job best. And somehow he's able to coach lacrosse, That's coach cool. youth football, yeah. be the offensive coordinator for Lakewood Township mm -hmm. High School, no, no, no. and you still have time to. to people. Right. Spend with his family, and he's a, he's a great family That's man. And uh, no. I just like to voice my support for Coach Thank you. Any good Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Do I have anyone else that would like to make a comment? Yes. Um, it's I, I don't have Moses. It's the one night we should have back here. Shannon. Shannon. 
Should I talk into the microphone, please, so we can hear them? Could you just look in the hall? Check in the Yeah, just read. Yeah, I do. I don't know. And then just the microphone's right there, if you could just speak into it. Um, we are checking the wiring for the screen behind us, so I, I apologize for the tef technical difficulty. Thank you, Mrs. Batesall. Is there anyone else with a comment? Seeing none. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Hold it a little closer. My son, Nita, has played for Lenny for the past few years. And he has taught our boys more than just football. He was, my son didn't leave that field without a handshake for Lenny every night, um, teaching them manners, teaching them to be good young men. Um, my significant other coached with Lenny for the past few years. And like I said, I've written a letter of recommendation on his behalf We've become friends, not just a coach relationship. We've become family friends. Um, Carolyn's son also played, and our boys, we've become a family of friends. It's not just on the field anymore. All the parents are friends, all the kids are friends. And that was all under Letty's direction. So we are in full support for him, and we're here to support him. He does carry on what he's built to put his level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else with a comment on items 1 through 14? Seeing none. Mrs. Carey? Mr. Barton? I'm good with this, yes. Ms. Suter? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. I don't. I don't, is Mr. Zdanowitz here? Mr. Danowitz, can you please come down as our new football coach and everyone can congratulate you. I'd also like to take the opportunity, um, Mr. Zananowitz, is there anything that you'd like to say? I see a lot of your boys out there. Yes, um, I would just like to thank um, all the kind words that I had from you know, a lot of parents that I've, of kids that I've coached, and I see a lot of the captains and the seniors, upcoming seniors this year for the team here. It means a lot, guys, really does. I mean, I've coached you at different levels, and I'm just honored to be given this opportunity by the Board of Education to, to do this job. I'm, I mean, the last time I tried to get this, I was dealing with a lot of stuff in my life. Uh, my mom passing away and everything, and this just means so much to me. I mean, I just want to give you guys every ounce of energy and life I have in myself, instilling you guys great character that I was given through this program, and everybody that I, that, that all the great coaches that I, that, that uh, coached me when I was here, and all the great coaches that I've got a chance to work with. Uh, one thing I want to say is that and I will do everything in my power along with, along with the staff that I you know, put together to see that you guys are successful more on, off the field and, and in life in the years to come and hopefully bring home another championship to the Green Dragons. Thank you very much everybody.
At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, Coach Dahl for everything that he did for the football program and let him know how much we appreciate everything that he did and his resignation was a surprise, right. but we understand why he did and we just want to say thank you for your service as our football coach for the last three years. Now I am going to go back up to the budget presentation. Yeah. So I can let all of our young men leave that would like to leave. Do we have Is it up? We're getting it, yeah. Do we have it up yet? Hang on. Thanks, Hang on. Right, Thank you. Are we on? Oh. We're on. So. All right, bye. Don't worry about it. Just go click on here. Yeah. This one is good. Yeah. You know what? Okay. This Jim's phone. Oh, Jim's not today. Sorry about that, everybody. So, can go? Right. Thank you. This is the 2015-2016 uh, school budget public hearing. Uh, the, so the 15-16 uh, school budget. For curriculum wise, there's are certain things that we'd like to highlight. Um, this is the first year that the county vocational schools have begun charging tuition for the share time program. Uh, they've always charged tuition for the full time program, uh, but this year they doubled the cost for the full time program for tuition and now they're charging tuition for the share time program. So that was a, a significant cost, cost to us in excess of $200,000 that they added to our budget. We've also seen an extended school year student population increase for the summer schools. So we're going to have uh, about $80,000 included in this budget to cover the increased cost of that expanded population. Uh, we are going to hopefully expand the coverage of our paraprofessional substitutes. So we've included additional monies uh, in, the, in the budget to cover that. The child study team uh, has to go through uh, new protocol with their testing kits, so there is training and kits involved in this budget that have been uh, provided for. We're going to be adding a robotics program at Brick Township High School, uh, similar to the one that's currently at Brick Memorial. We are going to be adding a first grade program at Warren Wolf Elementary School as that school each year builds out. Uh, the elementary level. We are also going to be adding a new bilingual kindergarten and first grade at Warren Wolf Elementary School for the uh, growing bilingual population. Uh, we are also planning 75 new desks and chairs at Warren Wolf for those three classrooms that I just mentioned above that the, that the programs are being added. We have included in the budget a new ELL help teacher at the Emma Hayes Young Elementary School. Uh, we're, in, we're including lease purchase uh, monies for purchasing new textbooks. The Big Ideas Math Program for high school and middle schools, college prep honors for physics, AP European History, and U.S. High School of the Americans for high schools. Uh, in addition to that, we're also including another lease to purchase for technology, which is where we purchase 10 new sound field systems for the classrooms that the systems that the teachers use to broadcast uh, uh, over a sound system. 160 Motorola radios. This is phase two of our radio project for safety and security of the students. Uh, Cisco phone upgrade, our, our Cisco phones are now in excess of five years old, so we have to purchase an upgrade to keep the Cisco phones running, which is voice over internet protocol. Sis 60 new desktop computers, uh, a new Mariachi switch for the backbone of the network, two new, 10 new card access installations for various stores throughout the school district to allow uh, secure entry, 20 interactive projectors, 75 surveillance cameras and 50 laptop computers. The budget also includes adding some portable AED so we can be in compliance with the uh, new AED requirements. Uh, some equipment for the Brook Township High School Band, which is a tenor saxophone and chimes with marching frame. And we're also adding a new position for facilities of uh, night inspector. The budget also includes maximizing transportation ridership and reorganizing, reorganizing routes, which Dr. Uzinski has begun a task force to be looking at the transportation uh, ridership and routes. 
In facility improvements, we're adding a lease purchase, which will uh, cover the purchase of eight public address systems for eight schools throughout the district. Uh, we currently have a lot of problems with aging public address systems throughout and causing safety and security issues. We're going to be replacing a rooftop boiler at Herbertsville Elementary School and a 15-ton rooftop unit at Veterans Memorial Middle School. In regards to revenue for the budget, um, the tax levy on the operational portion of the budget, which is the portion that the board will be asked to vote on tonight, is remaining exactly the same, not increasing at all. Uh, the overall tax levy, however, will be increasing by 0.9%, uh, bringing the total tax levy to $100,721,000. Uh, that is due to the debt service decrease that we saw last year for uh, the one-time reduction on the principal and interest for the 2002 bonds that were uh, finally able to be moved over to the debt service fund. State aid bill is remaining relatively flat with a slight reduction in extraordinary aid. Our federal grants, we're anticipating a slight increase. Uh, we're utilizing a little bit less surplus uh, and our other revenues such as uh, the, the money we get from Medicare and sale of SREX is remaining relatively the same. The overall operating budget is uh, remaining up relatively flat, uh, only an increase of 0.2%, about $140,472,180. As I indicated previously, in regards to the uh, special revenue with the grants, we're anticipating a little bit more money there. And as you can see, the repayment of debt is actually decreasing as uh, the, the principal and interest on our bonds um, uh, age and, and the more principal being paid and less interest. So the total expenditures are slightly up, uh, again, by 0.2%. I'm sorry, 0.3% uh, when you include the grants that we're anticipating, which is increasing by 1.1%. Um, and that is all I have. Our full budget is uh, detailed on our website. You can look at the whole 800 page plus document. Uh, there's also a user friendly version, which is a little bit easier on the eyes if you're not into all the detail. And we will be posting this presentation um, along with the uh, does anyone have any board members have any questions for Mr. Edwards? I have a couple of questions. Um, you had said eighty thousand dollars for the summer program. Is that the summer special ed program base camp? Yes. Is, why? Why so much? Is there an increase? Uh, yes, there's an increase. Just an increase in the number of students. Two hundred. About how many? Two hundred. So we're thinking going to have 200 more this summer. Yes. Okay. Um, you said something about expanding the paras. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It said something up there about the paras, and you had mentioned that. Yeah, you're para professional substitutes. So currently, um, we have not been able to provide para professional substitutes for every absence that we've had. So then it's been, you know, an issue with the amount of money we've been paying and being able to hire people for those positions. So we're looking to increase that and hopefully attract and retain substitutes that we'd be able to pay. So we're anticipating more money is going to be spent for you because of that. And how much more? How much more will they be getting a day? How much more? How much more will they be getting? Like, what do they get now? No. Well, how do you figure out how much you need? We came up with a budgetary number based upon what we have now. With a slight increase in pay, we don't know what that number is going to be. It's going to be something that human resources going to be going to have to determine. And we multiply that out to ensure that if every substitute was to be filled over the past year, how much more money would we need? And then the amount was just over 300000 Um, And I don't even know if you're going to know this off the top of your head, but what is the cost of the robotics class at Park Township? I, mean, I don't know that. I mean, at the high, both high schools. I, have to look, I don't know that from my head. Look at the detail of the budget. Okay. Um, so between the debt service and the point two, you're talking about a 1.1 total increase. No, no, no. What's the point? Because you said point two. It's the, the total budget, total budget is going up 0.3% on expenditures, 0.3. And point two of that is on operations, and point one is on the grants, special service, the special revenue fund. Okay, well, what about the point nine of the debt service? That's that on the tax levy. So that's only a one portion of the budget. That's the revenue tax levy. Okay, so that's 1.2. No, no, no. The point okay. Is within the point two, so you've got 
I just want to okay the last time we at yes. the meeting with the tentative budget it was 0.9 for the debt service correct yes yeah, so if you turn okay. and look at the that behind it you see the tax levy the yeah. tax levy line so we're going from 99 million 113,095 dollars to 100 million 721 dollars on the tax levy that's increasing 0.9% and that is strictly due to debt service right the total budget when you go all the way down to the bottom of $146,520,780 is increasing to one forty six nine thirty two sixty seven, which is a 0.3 increase, 0.3%. So it's only a 0.3% increase. Total budget, yes. Tax only 0.9. Jim, may I, may I ask uh, what are um, total uh, tax levy was last year, our general tax levy was last year. Do you have that figure? And that's, as, as I'm to understand it, the same this year? Mr. Conti, yeah. I couldn't hear your question. Could you? The question is, is the, is the general fund tax levy remaining the same? And the answer is yes. There's no increase in the general fund tax levy. The only increase in the tax levy is due to debt service. So how much is that 0.3% for a homeowner? About? You're talking about the 0.9 really, the tax levy. It's about $25 a year. OK. Okay, you just lost me again. You just brought back in 0.9. The tax levies don't have 0.9%. I, I get that. I get that. I want to know, in this budget, how I'm voting. I'm thinking 0.9 for the tax, for the debt service. That's where you're getting confused. You're not voting on 0.9. 0.9 is debt service. You're voting on zero. You can't you're voting on no increase in tax levy. That's what you're voting on. Okay. But my taxes are going to go up because of the debt service. Right, which is because of previously approved referendums right. that we can't do anything at this time and about. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if I don't know if you can answer this, but um, I don't know what is going on with the high schools with the A B schedule. I didn't see anything up there on curriculum. If we need more teachers next year for the A B schedule, I don't I have no idea what's going on with that. I'll take that. We do not need more teachers, and it's not going to impact anything with the budget, so it's not in the budget. Are you going to an A-B schedule for freshmen and sophomores? Has, I don't want to talk about A day, B day, because that has nothing to do with finance or budget. But it might, because what, it I mean, have, not, you, have you looked that, into it in case we need more teachers? I've because usually looked, when you go for no, an A... No, I'm just telling you, we've looked into it already. We do not need the teachers. So are you going to an A-B schedule for Possibly. freshmen and sophomores? Possibly. We're working on it. We're still discussing. We're still in discussions. I'm meeting with the two, Mr. Cal Dr. Callas, what am I meeting with the uh, May I don't remember the date. I believe May 6th. Thank you. So I'll have more information once I meet with the staff. When did, you, when did you do a study that you didn't need more teachers if you decide to go to an A-B schedule for freshmen and sophomores next year? Looking at it all year. You've been looking at it all year, and yet we did, you didn't say anything to the curriculum committee when we met on the No, 27th. because not until I have something definitive, there's no sense of talking about it. But I if, research it first. Right, but if, so you're telling me there will be no more teachers if you decide to go to an A-B schedule, but you haven't decided that. I want to just understand what you're saying. Right now, at this present time, there is no need for any additional teachers. But if you decide to go to an A-B schedule for freshmen and sophomores in the two high schools, Will there be a need for teachers? Possibly not. I do, at this time, we're saying no. And right now, we have a day B day in freshmen. We do have it, and we don't have any increase in staff. Right. That's only the first so, year, though. So I don't matter. understand. I can't vote on a budget if I think that's, you know, we have we're going to need more money for teachers if you decide to do this, which I'm I think is a good no, idea. I'm saying no, we do not. Because and we have less students for next year. And what we've discussed so far now is no, we do not need teachers. Well, we you haven't made a decision if you're gonna if you but you Dr. haven't made a decision if you're gonna go to an A day B day for freshmen and sophomores. You haven't made that decision. I'm saying I will not need additional teachers. Dr. Keller, you want to say something? Mrs. Suter, I think I can answer your question. Regardless if it's an A day B day or semester schedule, teachers teach enough. three periods a day. Whether it's gonna they're gonna be teaching on Monday. Mm -hmm. three A days and then on Tuesday three B days or on Monday a semester one, Tuesday a semester one again. It doesn't matter so that they're still teaching three periods each day regardless. So every two days they're teaching, you know, they're going to teach an A day and a B day Monday, Tuesday. They're going to teach the same amount of classes if they were teaching a semester. So they're not, they don't need any other 
We don't need more staff when we switch it. It's the same. Let me give you a scenario. Well, I'm just. I was let me just say because when we went through the the uh, trial of the ADB day, and then the following year we went to a four by four. They had said if we went to an ADB day, we would need more teachers. I think. I think, Dr. Kellis. I think what she's asking is if, and I wasn't here when they did that. Yeah. If you went a, a pure ADB day with every single subject, you would yes, you would need then you would need more teachers. In our case, we're, we're not dealing with that. language arts and math. Yeah, we're only doing math I think and that's where the confusion is coming in. Yeah. So no, I apologize not. for that, but there is not no, any There's not any teachers. confusion. Um, I just wish somebody would have made a decision. Um, when Mr. Cranston came to the curriculum meeting, he said that he was looking to update the SAT review class books, which are nine years old, since the SAT will be changing next year. Is that in the budget? Yes, there's funds for that. There's funds for an SAT review, math, and English. Yes. Are any teachers being cut? No. And there's no update on the middle school social studies books? That was taken out of the budget. I think that's a shame. What about the ESS program? Meeting with them next week. You said you, you met with, you were meeting with them last week. Dr. Yuzinski? Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a meeting and we're at the stage where we are, we had an open house yesterday where we met with parents um, for them to come in, meet with the ESS people to discuss the possibility of them wanting to bring their child back into district. Thank you. And I know they want to meet with me because I got an email just to ask for a meeting. So I don't know when that's going to be scheduled. Any other questions from board members? Sure. Just a yes, Mr. Panucci. Uh, Jim, just to make sure, you know, the, the bonds were paying off by law from the debt service. That's from just 2002 or is it like 2002 through 2006? Anything from the late 90s or it's just 02? Oh, yeah. There's, there's four outstanding referendums. Okay. 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 And the actual, so that by law it has to come up no matter what, but we're actually voting on a zero. Okay. You're actually voting on I just wanted to make sure it was on the right track. Anyone else with a question? No? Okay, I'm going to open it up to the public. Any questions? Can you please come up and sign in for the record and state your name? Jim has it. Okay, I'll give you mine. Oh, okay. Edwards? Uh, it, it's a few different things. The first thing is we're going to take a look at um, is the appropriate amount of ridership on each bus currently occurring. Um, we took a look at the routes already and, and we do see that there are some routes that occur during the school day that the ridership is low. So there could be some increases in the students that are assigned, but then we have to balance that with how the length of the route because we have a limited window where we can get kids to and from school where we have a peer transportation system, so we have to only have a limited window there. And reorganizing routes, um, again, is there an opportunity where uh, maybe there's a crossover or things that can be done more efficiently, where uh, routes can be done more efficiently, that's a better way of saying it. So uh, Dr. Yuzinski and uh, the task force are something that we're looking at, and uh, what we do feel that there is some safety there. And it, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, letting go of our, I'm sorry, letting go of our uh, parochial schools or anything like that, we're, we're not eliminating them from our 
It could. Yeah, it could. It could, it could be, um, you know, looking at sending route to the commission, which is a coordinated transportation service provider in OESC uh, for junctures. So there are various things that we're going to look at. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions from the public? Thank you. No other questions for Mr. Edwards? Okay. Uh, Ms. Cantillo, I, just, I would like to start off by saying thank you to the Board of Education for your support for this process. It's been, uh, it's been trying at times. Yes. Uh, specifically, I'd like to thank the Finance Committee, Ms. Cusinelli, Chairing the Committee, uh, yourself, uh, Mr. Conti. Um, you guys have given up a lot of hours yeah. working with Dr. Vinsky and myself. Um, pain, painstaking, I know, at times. Uh, Mr. Reed, for your continued support. It's now in a volunteer, well, his volunteer report, but now he's a true volunteer. <laughs> and he is well comes in and uh, provides support. And our program managers, uh, my office, who uh, every, I think we're getting used to it now, this is a very stressful time of year in the business office, especially myself, uh, Mary, who has offered a tremendous amount of support, Maria Roberts as well, uh, you know, the backbone of the operation, uh, and all the program managers of the feed us all the information. I know you understand because you're involved in it, but I'm not sure the public really understands that we, we start this budget process all the way back in October. Uh, so it starts in October, works its way through. Uh, after the New Year breaks, Dr. Zinzi and I sit in a room with every program manager in the district and go over every single line of the budget. So if you go online and you see that monstrous document, there's all those lines. We looked at every single one of those lines, asked for support on a lot of issues changed a lot of things, gone back and forth. Um, you know, Mr. Lyming, I think you came over three different times and met with us. So um, thank you for your time and effort. I know everyone besides uh, their normal job doesn't just want to do budget with us. So I just want to thank everybody for their support and I think yes, thank you for the for all your time and commitment that you give it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Edwards, and thank you very much for good. everything. Thanks, I'd like to also thank everyone that you thanked, because having worked with everyone, um, I know what an arduous task it is to put this budget together, and um, it is a lot of hard work, and it does start many, many months uh, before we actually vote on it. Um, thank you, everyone. Moving on to operations, Mr. Edwards. Yes, the superintendent would like to, the, uh, the board to consider items 1 through 29. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Do I have a motion and a second for items 1 through 29? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Panucci. Second. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Do I have any questions or comments from the board on these items? Mrs. Souter? Can you explain number 28? Mr. Edwards, I'm going to ask you to do that. You're much better at the insurance plans than I am, but it sure. has to do with the um, Affordable Care Act, Mrs. Souter. Yes. Let me take that one, Megan. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the Affordable Care Act um, has us now, as of January 1st, uh, requiring us, I should say, to offer anyone who works more than 30 hours on average a week has to be provided health care coverage. Uh, under the Obamacare, what's known as minimum value coverage. Uh, the current plans that we have negotiated with our, with our unions um, are above that minimum value. Uh, so these plans, that this minimum value plan would be offered to people who may be um, uh, in a temporary position, um, maybe employees of the BEST program who are not, these, basically this plan would be open to anyone who wants to join it, but really it's going to be applicable to those who aren't already covered by a collective bargaining agreement. Are the BEST program employees covered by, aren't they covered under the BTA? They are not. They're, They're not, not covered under a collective bargaining agreement, so, and they don't, most of them do not work more than 30 hours a week, so only the few that do would be able to purchase this plan. Okay. Thank you. I think it's a water issue. Anyone else with a question? It's a water. Seeing none. I, I have. I do, Ms. Pantilla. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Barton. Uh, number 24, the Southgate, says um, the contract reads from 6 to 11. What time is it that high school students have to be in the house with their driver's license? I thought that was 11 o'clock. Dr. Caldez, could you? 
I mean, most most of our students who go there, you know, trans are transported yeah. either by limos or their actually parents come up and get them. Um, we, you know, the prom ha we have to be out of there by eleven o'clock. Usually we do the they do the king and queen by ten, and then we start. You know, the kids start to disperse ten o'clock. They start, you know, shooing them out. So, but you know, the contract we you know if we go over we have to pay extra. So we are done by eleven, and the kids are on their way home by then. Okay, that makes more sense then, just to protect yourself in case there's yeah, still go over, people in the facility. Just, yeah, because they're you know they got staff they're paying, so if we go over they got to we got to pay extra. All right, I understand. Anyone else with a question before I open it up to the public? Seeing none. Anyone in the public with a question on these items? Hopefully we can get. I know. I, I, I apologize. We're just on the first one. They just were on. Start with number one, and then show the public. Give everybody a couple of seconds to look at the screen. I'm sorry you didn't have an opportunity before. If anyone has a question, just feel free to raise your hand and I'll have you come up. Last call for any questions? Seeing none, Mr. Edwards? Ms. Carey. Mr. Barton? <laughs> yes. Ms. Souter? Yes, on 28, I abstain from everything else since I didn't get my other questions answered through email. Thank you. Mr. Conti? Yes. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Ms. Cantillo? Yes. This time, do I have any board members with any comments or questions? Just comments. Absolutely, Mr. Panucci. I always look forward to your comments. <laughs> um, just a few things. Uh, first, obviously, I want to wish Mr. Talty well. Um, hope he recovers quickly. Um, I had a chance to go to the Pals Club dance in March. For those of you that don't know, that's where our mainstream students uh, partner up with our special needs students. And this was the biggest Pals Club dance they've had in the last two years. They had about 100 students there uh, from both high schools they invite and they hosted at Brick Memorial. It was a fantastic time. The kids had a great time. More importantly, uh, the other night I went to Lake Riviera Middle School. They had their Dream and Steam Expo, which was fine and performing arts, science, and technology. Their ELL students had an interactive language booth as well. Um, it was really inspiring. Uh, not only were the kids into it, but the teachers were probably more excited than the kids. Um, it was good to see, and it was good for them to show off everything they've been doing. Uh, teachers that rock, the RAT had their action, the 95.9, the RAT have their annual Teachers That Rock, and Susan Smith from Brook Memorial was a teacher that rocks. Mr. Conti and I both had her in high school, and uh, she's been a role model ever since. And on Sunday, uh, we are doing our, over at Point Pleasant Beach, the Kidney and Urology Foundation of America has their annual walk. I bring this up every year. My sister, a teacher at Brook Memorial, who donated her kidney to my father, which didn't work out. As we all well know, we have a team here in Lovell Panucci. That's 10 a.m. at the Band Shell in Point Pleasant Beach on Sunday. It's every year. We do it to raise money for the foundation in his honor. And that is it, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Panucci. Mr. Conti, I know you always have nice follow-up comments. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Cantillo. Um, I, I, too, wanted to extend my uh, 
get well soon to uh, Mr. Talty. Um, hopefully he recovers quickly and he enjoys his time, um, not with all of this craziness for, <laughs> for a little bit. Um, I, I also wanted to just mention that um, I was able to briefly stop by the Lanes Mill 50th anniversary. Uh, I was a student there from I think it was 1986 to about 1990, um, and it was uh, it was great to see some teachers that are uh, are there. Um, they were probably in their teens. I don't know how they got hired back then, being teenagers uh, when I was there. But uh, it was uh, it was great to uh, to see everybody there, uh, although briefly, um, and to have such a wonderful history celebrated. The other thing was that we got to go over to Brick Day and see the Mustangs play the Dragons in baseball. Uh, it was a great night, a bunch of people there. Uh, it's, it's wonderful that Lakewood allows us to, uh, the Blue Claw Stadium allows us to come and host that event. Uh, it's, a, it's a great night for the community. And finally, um, just a bit of bragging. Um, my wife ran the Boston Marathon on April 20th, and, uh, and she wound up uh, beating her time from last year. Um, the weather was not that great. Uh, it was cold, rainy, windy. Terrible. She said she wanted to stop by mile 11, but uh, she ran it in 321. So I am very, very proud of her. And uh, that is it, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Conti. <laughs> Mr. Barton? My turn. Um, first of all, I'd like to just say that I, I'm kind of feeling left out down here. I, I, no, I, I, it's because. I'm on one committee. I've been on the board since January, and I've only been assigned to one committee. I was on a, another committee with Mr. Talty having to step down. It's been reorganized. Um, originally, I was posted to be on a negotiation committee, and I, um, I honored Mr. Talty's opinion, which was because I wasn't here in the past that he felt as if things should be continuing the way they were. But in the future, I don't understand. I know I'm conflicted, but I don't understand why I'm conflicted on certain things that have just come up saying that I'm conflicted. So I think I'm asking to, and I'm politely asking, just to look into it again, because there are things that I have time to do. And I'm going to be stable here. I'm three years elected to the position. I'm going to be one of the, uh, the people that you're going to turn to eventually. The more exposure I have now with the full board and the experience that the board has at present is just going to help everybody. So for the integrity of the board, put me some places if you can. Find the time to do that or find in your hearts to do that. Um, I, now for how busy everybody has been, Lanes Mill, I was at Lanes Mill School too for their 50th anniversary and I know they're missing a time capsule and time capsules have superstitions with them so hopefully we'll find that and have it open in the right way so that nothing bad happens with Lanes Mill School. Vets Elementary School had a terrific art program. The district, all the art program, all the art displays from all the elementary schools were held at Vets Elementary. It was kind of exciting to see all the families walking around the building that night. And lastly, the coach's position, um, Mr. Zidanowitz has taken on a huge task. For those of you that are out here that don't coach, there's something about the amount of time that high school coaches give that has nothing to do with money at all. It can interfere with family lives, it can interfere with the time spent with their children at home. Um, it can interfere with their jobs. Uh, so you have to create a balance, and I know Mr. Zidanowitz is up to that, but I think that he deserves a lot of praise for stepping up and, and offering to put himself in that position because it, it's just such a difficult thing to be a high school coach. So I, I praise him for that, and we'll see you in a month. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Barton, and after the meeting we can discuss that committee stuff. I have a little uh, update for you okay. that just happened today. Appreciate that. Okay. Anyone else? Mrs. Cusinelli? Yes, I would, I'd like to echo, I couldn't say it any better than, than you did, Ms. Cantillo, but I do really from the heart want to thank John Talty. I mean, it goes without saying that he'll be greatly missed, but I do want to say thank you for all the time that he put in, both as a taxpayer um, and, and as a parent and as a board member. I really appreciate everything that he did, and uh, he really, I want to start a round of applause for him, too, one more time, because we didn't do that before. 
and, and I also want to echo um, the thanks that, that uh, Mr. Edwards extended to everybody who put in so much time on this budget. I mean, time, times are tough. It's not easy. And uh, I do appreciate all the help that, uh, thank you, Mr. Edwards. A lot of questions back and forth, a lot of changes. Um, but I think that uh, we did right by the taxpayers and the kids and everybody involved, which is what we're here to do. Thank you, Mrs. Cusinelli. Any, anybody else with, no? Okay. I can open it up to the public if anybody has a comment. Mr. Hyphantis, always nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. Barton. I'd like to thank the board for allowing us to have the green fair at the high school this year. Last year we had 27 tables, this year we had 40. Last year we had 100 people, this year we had 300. So I'm going to ask you next year, if you get to the gym again, hopefully we have some overflow. Again, thanks to the board for allowing us to do that. And a brief update on sustainable in Jersey. I talked to Doc, and he gave me the name of Dr. Dillon and Dr. Anderson, respectively, at uh, the extremes and like every other. We made a presentation to them last week and Dr. recommendation. They have volunteered to, well, I guess they're going to volunteer. They have volunteered, I'm not quite sure how this they works, but <laughs> they, they, they agreed to do the, the prototypes in terms of uh, getting qualified for sustainable New Jersey. So I look into that uh, to happen this year. The standalone jersey for schools doesn't give you a lot of cash in your pocket, but once we get certified one or two schools, it allows us to apply for grants. Can't do that until we get certified. So I'm looking very much forward to having that happen this year. We have to get registered sometime during June and start sending our applications and our certifications. And it seems to me that the reception of that both schools is very positive. So thanks, Doc, for getting the program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hyphantis, for helping us with that and, and establishing that for us. You have been the driving force. And Mrs. Cusinelli. Thank you, John. Mostly John. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I am going to go over our dates and um, May 25th, uh, Memorial Day, schools are closed. Uh, May 28th is our next regular meeting here at Brick Township High School at 7 o'clock. And I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Thank you, Mr. Panucci. A second. Thank you, Mr. Conti. And good night, everyone, and thank you for coming to our meeting. Good night, Mr. Mr. Barnes. Good night. Yes. Ms. Suter. Please call me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Conti. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Yes. Conti. Ms. Cusinelli? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Panucci? Yes. Winston. Ms. Cantillo? Winston. Um, yes. Right now in the high school? Yes. They're the eight. Eight. Yes. It's every other day. So, what is